this speech, I'm going to talk about uh, cookie jetting. Uh, cookie jetting is a new attack technique that allows an attacker to steal a session cookies of his victim uh, independently from the website which the cookie belongs to and without the need of any process of victim vulnerability. The uh, cookie jetting attack relies on, on two pillars. The first is uh, uh, zero day vulnerability affecting every Internet Explorer version and uh, working on every Windows OS box. And the second is uh, uh, an advanced use of a uh, quick check and attack. And I'm going to talk about this later in the speech. Okay, uh, we have a very little time and a lot of things to talk about. So, uh, a few words about myself. Uh, I am an IT professional working in a mobile tech company based in Rome, Italy. And I'm focusing on very guided services. So I'm not a security professional. I, I started researching on um, security, especially on web security issues, about four years ago. And since then, I read a bunch of advisories and core concepts, among which I'd like to mention the connection, which was the first ever across the main XSS world. It was able to spread uh, amongst the four most popular web mail providers in Italy. Uh, an advisory about uh, the mobile framework. The mobile framework is a web mail framework produced by a crypto path company. Um, it's quite widespread. The, the vulnerability was uh, about the possibility for an attacker to send an email to the victim. The victim, by just opening the email, uh, could modify the auto forward settings so that any further email received by the victim were automatically forwarded to the attacker. Uh, another advisory was related to Windows Data Player. Uh, it was a bug that allowed an attacker to perform information gathering both on victim local machine and both on victim local internet. Some kind of internet scan. And last year, the last advisory was about a uh, claim for special support to vulnerability in after the boxes. So this is the URL of my, log, of my blog, you can check it out for the details of my works. Okay, uh, let's start talking about Internet Explorer security zones. This is because the uh, zero day vulnerability account is a bug in uh, the security zones management in Internet Explorer. <coughs> Basically, uh, security zones are a proprietary mechanism uh, that Microsoft introduced in uh, their browser line in order to let the user define an appropriate level of security for each web component. Uh, basically, an Internet Explorer at any site is assigned to a security zone. And all sites belonging to the same security zone behave in the same way according to security privileges. Uh, by default, uh, uh, there are five predefined security zones, and they are listed here from the, the more privileged to the less privileged, and they are local machine zone that applies to any content obtained from your local machine, local internet zone that applies to uh, any content set from your local internet, I mean, if you are in <coughs> operation and uh, access uh, the internet to a proxy, um, uh, this applies to any content that is served from a host within the exclusion list of the proxy settings. And it also applies to any content retrieved uh, using a uh, UNC pets. Then the trusted site zone is a list uh, the user may decide to put some, some trusted domain in. Uh, then there is the internet zone, applies to any content retrieved from the web. And the secret site zone that works, uh, it's, it's like trusted site zone but works in the opposite way. So the sites are, are granted a minimum number of privileges. Uh, users cannot add or delete security zones but can uh, uh, modify the association between uh, security zone and security privileges. And this can be done using security profiles. Uh, a security profile, a security profile basically is a collection of security privileges, privileges that can be assigned to a security zone. Um, user may choose between uh, sorry, predefined security profiles, I mean high, medium, medium, low, and low, or can or can customize each security profile by editing each privilege contained in the security profile. There are a lot of privileges that, which uh, you can play with. I mean, ActiveX and plugin execution, uh, file downloading, user authentication, uh, scripting language execution, and cross-zone interaction. Cross-zone interaction occurs, occurs when two web contents uh, belonging to different zones try to interact with each other. Uh, the association between zones uh, and profiles can be, uh, can be modified going into the security tab of the tools option in Internet Explorer. By default, you will see that only four security zone, zones are visible. 
Uh, this zone is, is called my computer, but it's a local machine zone. It's by default hidden because uh, basically it manages the way that browser should behave when opening local files. So it's quite sensitive, and Microsoft doesn't want you to mess around with this configuration. You can make this visible by changing uh, a registry key. Okay, well, we were talking a while ago about cross-zone interaction. How it works? Uh, by rule of thumb, uh, a web content assigned to a, a less privileged zone could not interact with the content assigned to a more privileged zone. For instance, if we uh, set up a, a simple web page and find an iframe instead of it and set the source of this iframe to a local file on our machine, as soon as uh, this web page is rendered within the browser, an access denied error will be raised. Uh, so in this scenario, the cross zone interaction policy behaves well. So it should be impossible for a web content to access a local machine file. At least it should be. Because it turns out that one of the most sensitive folders in your machine is the only one folder that can be accessed from outer zones. And this is the folder that contains all your cookies. If we slightly modify the code of the web page and set the source of the iframe to the cookie path, the cookie path here, we will see that the cookie content will be actually rendered inside the iframe. Okay? This is an obvious violation of cross-zone interaction because uh, we are accessing a lot of content uh, from uh, an internet domain. You see the URL here on the internet. Okay, uh, what kind of cookie, what kind of content, let's say, it, could you access with, with, uh, with this approach? Any kind of cookie, um, as long as it belongs to the user currently logged over the Windows machine. You cannot access cookie belonging to other users. But as long as uh, uh, the current user is concerned, you can access any kind of cookies. Uh, I mean, HTTP only cookies, secure cookie, whatever the website. Because in this scenario, they are just they they lose their security characterization. They are just managed as normal text files. Uh, this is a zero-day vulnerability and works on uh, Internet Explorer six, seven, eight, and also with nine. Uh, I've tested it on Windows XP, Windows Pack three, Windows Vista, and Windows seven. Okay. Just a, bit, just a bit of history about disclosure. Uh, being a, a zero day vulnerability, I to disclose it to Microsoft Security Response Center by the end of January. Um, at that time, Internet Explorer 9 beta was out and was affected by this vulnerability. By the middle of March, uh, Microsoft delivered the first official release of Internet Explorer 9, and they were able to catch this vulnerability. So in a lot of months, they, they, they were able to deliver a safer browser version, okay? Uh, I should add until now, because uh, a couple of weeks ago, I found a, a quick workaround in order to reverse Microsoft protection. Basically, uh, instead of uh, directly accessing the cookie content using file schema, uh, it's enough to access uh, um, it through uh, a remote CGI, for instance, a Perl script. That does nothing except from redirecting your browser to the local file, uh, uh, local cookie file. So uh, what happened here is that uh, in this uh, redirection process, uh, the cross-zone interaction policy seems to be no more important. So basically, even uh, in Internet Explorer 9, we are able to display cookies inside the frames. Okay. Okay. Where do we go from here? We have a. a an approach we have a technique that allows us to load arbitrary cookies within an iframe. But we still miss a way to exploit this vulnerability because if we programmatically try to access the cookie content, we are blocked by same origin policy. Um, for instance, if we try a statement like this, okay, get me the inner HTML or find the iframe, okay, same origin policy will block us. Uh, just like we speak about same origin policy necessary. Uh, the same origin policy is a uh, uh, security policy enforced in, in all browsers that states uh, more or less this uh, two of the contents could not interact grammatically with each other unless the, the domains, the ports and the protocols are the same. Uh, here we have the maximum maximum until the same origin policy. To be honest, it is quite more complicated than this. But in order to comprehensively talk about the same origin policy, it will take us more than a day. So for the presentation scope, it's just enough. 
So we need a way to access the free content without triggering the same origin policy. Moreover, there is, there is a, a second issue. Uh, we need to guess, to guess the deep images they made because we need to properly define the iframe source. In order to properly define the iframe source, we need uh, the user name. Uh, if you notice here in the, uh, the, the complete uh, cookie path, uh, in this string, the user name occurs twice. The first time in the cookies folder and the second time in the cookie file name itself. Okay, so we need the user name. Another thing we need uh, is, uh, uh, know, is to, to know uh, the operating system version that it is running. Because uh, different operating systems store cookies in different folders. For instance, XP store cookies in document and setting, use the main cookies, VSTN 7 in a completely different folder. Okay, so in order to solve the first issue, uh, let's move talking on the other topic of the presentation. I mean, uh, click jacking. Okay, click jacking is a, uh, uh, is a tech technique uh, that was introduced in 2008 by uh, Robert Hansen and Jeremiah Grossman. It's all about two things, uh, iframes and stashes. Uh, through a clever use of uh, uh, iframes overlapping and uh, uh, Starship transparency, uh, an attacker may trick a victim into clicking on some resource, I mean a button or a link, while this click is actually hijacked by a third party iframe. Uh, let's look at the basic approach. Uh, let's suppose that the, uh, the blue canvas here is the attacker web page. Okay? The attacker can find a button and an iframe. This iframe, for instance, uh, it loads some content from a third party web page. Okay? This is quite little. Uh, there are three things that the uh, attacker can control. First, he can control the absolute position of the frame within his uh, web page. So he can proper position the uh, frame to be over the bottom. <coughs> Second, he can control the, the size of the frame, I mean the height and width, so that uh, uh, the, the iframe shape perfectly fits the bottom shape. Third, he can control three important properties of the style sheet applied to the frame or to the web page. And these properties are opacity and, and z index. Uh, opacity is about uh, how the iframe is transparent. So opacity of zero means that the iframe is completely even, while opacity of 100 means that the entire web page in this scenario is fully visible. The other property is z index. <coughs> Z index is about uh, the position of the frame on a theoretical Z axis coming out of the screen. Uh, so uh, Z index of, of uh, zero applied to the web page and Z index of one applied to the frame uh, mean that the, uh, the frame is actually above the attack web page, but it's hidden. So when a victim tries to click over the button, it's actually not clicking on the button, but it's clicking on the frame, so on some other resource that is contained in the frame. Okay. So you are in some way forging some clicks. What kind of attacks you can do with this approach? cross site record forgery and drive to the lots, for instance. In, in the last couple of years, we have seen uh, a bunch of real-life attacks using uh, leveraging and <coughs> jacking, especially on uh, social networks, such as Facebook. Uh, and they were aimed uh, to forge clicks on some link. I mean, add a friend, a little friend, or something on, on my wall, and so on. Uh, last year, a security researcher named Paul Son, in a previous security conference, uh, introduced an advanced click checking scenario that he called content extraction. Uh, basically, this is the scenario uh, an attacker may trick a victim into selecting, selecting some content from a legitimate third party frame. Uh, using drag and drop approach, he can trick this victim to drag it out of the frame and drop it into an attacker controller element. The aim of this attack, uh, what is obviously to steal some sensitive content from the third party frame. Uh, it's important to notice that as long as with the content itself, uh, using the drag and drop functionalities, also um, links and images can be automatically converted into URLs. And this is pretty valuable for an attacker because often, uh, <coughs> especially in authenticated domains, uh, URLs contain session IDs, tokens, uh, elements like this that can, be, that can be very useful for an attacker in order to perform session writing attacks. Let's have a look on how, how uh, it works.
towards uh, the uh, content extraction technique. Uh, let's suppose that this canvas here is a hacker web page, and the hacker talked about a simple game in which uh, asks uh, his victim to drag with some content, for instance, uh, uh, an OK somewhere on the screen. Um, using the click jacking uh, uh, approach, uh, there is uh, an iframe that is hidden, and it's above the monkey itself, that loads some content from a third party domain. This is the third party domain. Uh, another thing uh, that is important, it's, it's quite important, it's, uh, is that the attacker can programmatically control the relative position of the frame into the third party web page. So he can programmatically position the frame to be uh, at the start, at the end, or somewhere in the middle of the content that he intends to steal. So the attack scenario starts with the, the attacker positioning uh, the iframe at the start of the content that he wants to steal. Uh, then he asks the victim, okay, drag among somewhere. The victim starts to drag. This event is intercepted by the attacker. The attacker programmatically moves the iframe to the end of the content that he intends to steal, so in position B. And this is happening while the victim is dragging the, the, the content down with the mouse button clicked. So the final effect is that the, all the text between A and B is being selected. Then the victim start, stops clicking, this event is intercepted once again, and the attacker moves the position of the frame somewhere in the middle of the selected content, for instance in the red area. Then the attacker asks once again the victim to drive the content somewhere else, for instance in this uh, area here, okay? This may be whatever editable HTML element, for instance a div, an iframe, uh, Text box. Okay. Uh, by performing this second drag action, what the victim is doing uh, is not only dragging the monkey, but dragging uh, the selected content contained in the into the inner frame. Okay, so from the, the, this moment on, the attacker can control all the uh, the text. Okay. So what do we have until now? Uh, we have uh, uh, zero vulnerability that allows us to load the arbitrary cookies. Into uh, we have uh, a content extraction technique that allows us to select some content from within an iframe and drag it out into, uh, into an attacker controlled element. The idea is uh, let's make a mashup and chain these two attacks in order to build a first pro concept. Uh, in my first pro concept, I talked about a, a simple game in which I asked my victim to drag a, a, a ball. Basket. From a technical point of view, there is an iframe, a frame that loads a uh, cookie, and the frame has uh, an opacity of zero, so it's completely hidden, uh, and has a z index of one, so it's above the ball, the ball image. Then there is a ball image that is overlapped on the frame, has a, an opacity of zero, so it's uh, fully visible, but has a z index of zero. So it's uh, uh, basically under uh, in the iframe. So using the content selection technique, when I ask my victim to drag the ball, it's actually not selecting the ball, but it's selecting the cookie. Uh, using some JavaScript uh, trick, I'm able to, uh, to mask the cookie text content and to um, uh, substitute it with some other image. I would like to show this in action if it works. Turn to Windows 7. Okay, the idea was to drag the ball into the 
was going to show you how the cookie will be displayed. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to show you. Okay, go, go, go. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay. Okay, uh, even using an approach like this, uh, unfortunately I can't show you, uh, we have a couple of issues more that we need to solve in order to build a reliable exploit. Uh, and they are, they are both about uh, uh, drag and drop functionality. Uh, basically, drag and drop API uh, doesn't work well across an Internet Explorer browser. Uh, so in order to be a, a, a product concept that works on every browser, we need to use some trust on the block API. The second, uh, two different uh, drawing actions are required in, uh, in the content extraction approach. The first, uh, in order to select the content, and the second, in order to uh, drag the content out and drop into an attack control element. <coughs> let's, uh, uh, let's see how it's possible to solve these two issues. Okay, about drag and drop. Uh, Drag and drop is commonly acknowledged as one of the biggest innovations of HTML5. Uh, to be honest, it's not quite part of HTML5 throughout the specification. Uh, the, the current implementation of drag and drop uh, uh, BI can be traced back from original Microsoft implementation that was supported in Internet Explorer 5 and no longer supported in the following releases. I mean, the situation is that Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8 doesn't fully support uh, uh, drag and drop. There are some content that you are able to drag to, to do drag and drop, and others that you are, able, you are not able to. So in order to build a reliable exploit, uh, it's useful to find a custom drag and drop implementation. I found a custom implementation of this domain uh, that works well across any Internet Explorer versions and also in Mozilla and uh, WebKit browsers. And, um, it allows you to define a lot of uh, effects, drag uh, feedback image, uh, I mean, uh, change the, the, the feedback image while you are dragging some content, or changing the, mark, the, the cursor shape when you are hovering uh, over the dropping area or a uh, 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 dropping area, and so on. Okay. About content extraction, I will show you how it's possible to steal uh, content from a third-party domain uh, using only a single drag action. Okay. Uh, this is the best approach. Uh, this is the attacker web page. Uh, the, attacker web, the attacker defines two nested iframes. Okay? The first contains nothing except from the second iframe. And the second iframe contains the cookie text uh, using the zero day probability we showed before. Uh, in order for this approach to work, it's important uh, to uh, uh, define, to properly define the two, the two iframe sizes. In order that scrolling is needed for the, the, the cookie content to come into view, and this is quite feasible if you uh, if you define very different uh, aids for the two frame. For instance, the first frame is at 100, and the second frame is at 100. So, which is the sequence? Uh, the sequence is uh, uh, the victim starts to click over the cookie. Um, as soon as happens, uh, the on focus event is triggered on the i frame. And the scroll speed of the iframe A is set to a big value. Okay? Uh, so the iframe A starts to scroll down and the B content happens to you. And this is happening while the victim is clicking down. So while the victim is clicking and the uh, content is scrolling up, the final effect is that, uh, is that as long as the, the victim continues to click, he continues also to select content. So, what we have done, we have collapsed the, the first drag action into a single click. So we have a, a click and a drag action instead of two different drag actions. Okay, let's hope that this works. I'd like to show how to do this.
recording action. Okay, I'm logged into Gmail. I open my program page. I have both the goal and both the iframe here with the same opacity. Okay? Uh, so, just, just if we toggle the opacity, this is the real life attack scenario, I see only the ball. When I start to drive, you see the drive to the big image? The final effect is that I'm not driving the, uh, the ball, I'm driving the, I'm driving the, the cookie. Okay? Now, with a mix of opacity, you can see uh, what, what it happens. Basically, uh, as I start to drive with the ball, I select uh, the cookie, and then the cookie is dropped into an attacker control environment. Okay? This is the basic approach. Okay, let's start it. Stop, please. Okay. Let's go back to the presentation. Uh, at this point, we scored another, uh, another, another point. We, we are able to uh, optimize content extraction in order to uh, drag some content uh, to only drop a single variation. We still miss the victim username. Okay? Uh, <coughs> in order to steal the victim username, uh, we are going to exploit uh, a feature of Internet Explorer that uh, was already discussed uh, last year by another researcher called uh, Minna. Uh, basically, Internet Explorer lets you access uh, some resources over SMB shares, remote SMB shares, using the UNC, uh, UNC uh, notation to uh, access this content. So basically, if you, if you define a, a tag inside your uh, web page, for instance, an image, and set the source of this image uh, with backslash, backslash, server IP, backslash image, uh, the, the browser is able to retrieve this image when you are uh, browsing in internet zone and internet zone. Um, what's the process, uh, the, the retrieving process like? Uh, first, the browser tries to uh, anonymously uh, access uh, the, uh, the remote uh, server share. Uh, if the anonymous access is denied, then an ATLM challenge response uh, negotiation starts. And as a part of this negotiation, the browser sent to the server Windows username, Windows computer name, and Windows domain name in clear, in clear text. So it's quite easy to steal this victim username uh, because you can put a, a script, for instance, a curl script uh, that on the server side uh, that sniffs all the traffic on uh, TCP port 445 and it's supported by CD protocol. So at this point, uh, we are able to load cookie into a frame. Uh, Access this cookie by extracting it using the appropriate functionality. Optimize content extraction and get uh, uh, the victim up here is a name. There is a, another point that we need uh, to get victim OS. Victim OS is quite simple. Uh, victim OS is contained uh, in a, a JavaScript object called uh, user navigator user agent. It's basically a part of the user agent that the browser sends in every HTTP request. So you can parse uh, the user agent and uh, look for uh, Windows NT 5.1, then it's the, the victim is running an XP machine. If it's uh, NT 6.0, then it's a PC machine, otherwise it's a Windows server machine. Okay, so we got all the points. Uh, another valuable information is to understand if uh, the cookie we are going to steal is valid. Because uh, uh, it's important uh, 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 if the victim is not authenticated, there is not a, uh, not a valid session over the target website, the cookie we are going to steal, it, maybe it's expired, so it's uh, not useful to steal. So uh, we could uh, probe the user victim to look for it uh, if it's authenticated over, over the target uh, website. And uh, uh, we can do this using a probing approach outlined by German and Grossman seven years ago. Basically, you can force the victim browser into retrieving uh, some contents, for instance, images, scripts, and so on, that are only available for authenticated users. Uh, so, for instance, here uh, I try to uh, retrieve a PNG image from Google, that it's only available if the victim is authenticated over Gmail. Okay? Otherwise, the error condition will be raised, the will be raised and uh, I know that maybe the cookie I'm retrieving from Google domain is not valid. 
Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this scenario gives uh, the attacker the possibility to perform a dynamic uh, attack setup in which it first uh, probes uh, the victim over a, seri a series of uh, a, number, a given number of domain, target domain. And then only for a particular domain, uh, it defines uh, a different number of wireframes, depending on the number of cookies that you want to see. Uh, the assumption here is that uh, one iframe uh, is able to load uh, one cookie, as I showed you before. Okay, so we have all uh, the missing uh, point here. Okay, we solved all of them, and uh, we are ready to uh, uh, to give a look at the final outline of the attack. The attack starts. Uh, uh, there is a victim on the other side, obviously, and the attacker on the right side. The the victim starts browsing over an attacker web page. Inside of this uh, uh, web page, there is uh, an, ima an image tag that is uh, pointing to a remote SMB share. Uh, the image is trying to retrieve, but it's a non-existent image, it's a double image. Uh, but when the browser tries to retrieve this image, uh, it sends to the server the Windows user name. Uh, the user name is captured on the server side by the capture script and stored on, uh, on uh, a text file on the server side. Uh, then the error condition is raised because the, uh, this was a, a, a non-existent image. So uh, on the error event, the browser is uh, redirected to a second Perl script. Uh, this Perl script uh, reads the username from uh, the text file on the server side and uh, redirects once again the browser to the final concept page. Uh, this page uh, has a static part in the URL and the dynamic part. The dynamic part is the hash part of the URL. And the hash part of the URL contains uh, the username. So what, what the victims get is, uh, is a custom proof concept page in which uh, uh, its username is contained in the hash part of the URL. Okay? Um, okay, uh, so the victim can be cookie jaded and uh, uh, send uh, the cookie to uh, the attacker. Okay, uh, now I finished with the theory and I should start with the practice. Uh, and so, when practice is, uh, is concerned, uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad to introduce you, Denis. I chose Denis for my, <laughs> as a subject for my product concept because according to Google, she is the most beautiful girl of the web. And you know, uh, I need, uh, in order to trick a user, I need uh, appealing content. I need some content which the user would willingly interact with. So, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm very. Unfortunately, uh, I, I can't sh show you live, but I show you a video of uh, this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay. This is the server side. On the server side, there is uh, the Perl script that sniffs all the traffic on the port uh, 445. Okay. Start with capture. Now I move on the attacker side. Now we are on the Windows XP Internet Explorer 7. Okay, I, am a, a sesh, I have a session on Twitter, Facebook, and Gmail, okay? Now I load the, the proof concept, okay? Okay, so the jigsaw to watch the snake, okay, seems promising, so I start playing. Uh, let's go back at the attacker, okay, on the attacker side. I capture the Windows, the, the victim username, tentacle, okay, and the string, is contained in the hash part of the URL, you see? So this proof concept is specially targeted for the victim. Uh, what we have here, we have four iframes. Behind each iframe, there is a cookie. You see that the, the cursor shape where over over the image, it turns the, 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 the cursor shape from an arrow to a text selector, okay? So we are managing, we are interacting with the cookie. And when I, when I start dragging, <coughs> There is the feedback image that tricks the image into believing that, okay? But under the, the hood there are the cookies. You see? Twitter, Google, Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Even the Google Street doesn't work. <laughs> okay, uh, go back to the presentation. For conclusions, okay, 
I showed you uh, a new kind of visual interface with Rusty Attack uh, that uh, is able to exploit a zero-day vulnerability affecting a brain transfer version on every Windows West box. It allows you to steal uh, uh, session cookies without the need of any suspected vulnerability in the target website. Uh, it's website independent because it's browser flow. Uh, and it can be stopped by current, current countermeasures that websites are putting into use to stop click checking because uh, these countermeasures are aimed at to um, prevent the framing. Uh, in this scenario, we are not framing uh, some web content, we are framing a lot of text files, so this is completely useless. Uh, what I show you, what I, I should show you, uh, uh, a couple of uh, HTML for concept. Uh, just think about what you can do using flash technology in order to, uh, to build a more attractive uh, uh, concept. Uh, in my humble opinion, this is uh, supposed to, to last for a long time, even if after uh, Microsoft will release a patch. Because, uh, you know, there is a, a huge customer base of tech, and then there are a lot of people who, who don't really download security updates. So uh, I think it's quite useful to share knowledge about this vulnerability to inform <coughs> people that dropping content over the internet could be very dangerous. Okay. Thank you all for your attention. If you have any questions. Yeah. Have you tried any of uh, the, the drag and drop for iframes and LSO object? Pardon? Drag and drop? Have you tried any of your techniques for flash LSO object? No, not tried. Uh, no, no, I've not tried the flash. Uh, I only use the uh, HTML and uh, JavaScript for the core concept. I'm not a, a flash guy, let's say. But maybe the LSO is uh, in another directory, so it's not possible to extract uh, them because you don't have access on all the file system. No, right? no, no, if you exit from uh, the, 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 the book folder of the current user, the you cannot folder. access. Otherwise, all the machine could be compromised. You can steal uh, some file or some other very sensitive information. Yeah. Apart from this, uh, uh, a bug, let's see, and uh, the same implementation of uh, uh, Internet Explorer is that uh, Internet Explorer doesn't store uh, cookies uh, in, uh, in a random folder. While, for instance, Mozilla and Chrome define random folders and random paths for the cookies. And this could be a, 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 an implementation that stops this kind of bug. But even if uh, even uh, Internet Explorer 9 uh, stores store cookies in predefined folders, so if you know the Windows username, if you know which, which version of the operating system that it is running, you're able to, uh, to uh, target this cookie. Okay. Another question? Okay. Yeah. Thank you.